good. Well, anyways, let's let's jump into this. So this is um, this is a it's not a remake. It's like they call it the Stanley Parable Deluxe. So it's the same game, but they've expanded on it. They've added more. So there's going to be a heap of stuff that I've already seen and done, but there's going to be a, hopefully a lot of new stuff, and that's what I'm here for. So uh, I'll still try and do everything I can in it. This game is hilarious. This is one of the funniest games I've ever played. The narrator really just makes it. Oh, maybe it tailors it. Maybe I don't have to do all the old content. Uh, we'll just leave it. Please enter the current time. Oh, fuck right off. What is this going to do? Why can't it just read it from my computer? <laughs> Thanks, Shrek. <laughs> yeah, have you joined the YouTube channel? I should add it on the Long Players channel too. Um. All right, real quick, we'll just check settings. I imagine everything's. Is, Okay, high is the highest. WSD, jump, interact. Simplified controls? How could you make it any simpler? <laughs> All right, well, anyways. The end is never the end is never the end. Yeah, here is too. I love the OG version. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Jay thanks for the 33 months. I had to bring it down because of all the talking. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. If I don't do it, you know, if I ignore the narrator... I think he says other things. Yeah, I've got um, alerts way down tonight because there's going to be a lot of talking in this game and that's the key part. And Oni, you're a dick. <laughs> thanks for the resub, man. Thanks for the 22 months. Can someone explain this game? I think you're gonna see it. It's it's a choose your own adventure. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed. Then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure beyond any doubt was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. <laughs> Here it comes. This one's in the original version. Oh, there we go. 
<clears throat> Ooh, hello, we're back. So I wonder what all of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Happen? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. It all looks the same so far. Username Axis. Um, Booze, thanks for the 20 months. You nerd. So far it all looks pretty much the same. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. What does it say? Number one, dad. Yeah. But eager to get back oh, to business, say... Stanley took the first open door on his left. Yeah, nah. Stanley was so bad at following directions, <laughs> it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Um, yeah. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. Is that different? What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I bet that does not. Awaiting input. There you go. I can't remember if that's one of the endings. Doing the inputs. Employee 427. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Maybe the meeting room's different. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, <laughs> Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> do you guys do all this? <laughs> uh, you guys, you guys follow all this, right? Number of slides on this slide. <laughs> uh, I think this is all the same. I can't remember. <laughs> the boss appreciation minute on your boss appreciation minute worksheet. Circle the top 20 things you <laughs> If you ever find yourself in a conflict with a diligent employee like yourself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, I've done the broom closet. Broom closet is my fave. Yeah, Alright, moving right along. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Or did he? He can't do anything else. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. There is a no broom. No reason to still be here. <laughs> It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm... I'm genuinely confused. <laughs> You need to bait him. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. <laughs> Maybe to you, this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet <laughs> ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concern. <gasps> it's so true. <laughs> Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. <laughs> he probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Uh, also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> oh, well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. <laughs> you got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? <laughs> the person at this computer is dead. They have fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on Is this them. in the original? I can't remember. All right. When you've done that, just step out into the hallway. If I just wait, does he still say more? I think that might be the end of that. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on the team. <laughs> T, you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. <laughs> you too? Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look. You can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. Yeah, I don't know. Is he going to do it again? That looks like it. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Toilet. <laughs> Extreme bathrooms. I think there's anything there. Like Blackadose? Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. <laughs> and so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 28 Four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing <laughs> random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct mm. code by sheer luck. 
Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. The best. Hey, Flip, thanks for the 38 months, man. That's the elevator. Is there something else? No, that is nothing. Castle, thanks for the bits. I've got it very low so you don't interrupt with the uh, narrator. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature <laughs> of his job. See, Castle. Up. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. You can go back up. Whoops. Nope. Uh, never mind. Stanley actually got back into the elevator and went back up. Silly me. Why I'm... did Stanley do that when he knew that it would just lead back to his boss's office? Well, that's a great question. I just can't wait to find out. I didn't think he could do that in the original. Here we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Ooh. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the <laughs> office again. This has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. It's that keen eye for storytelling that you have. An incisive rapid fire of critical plot points, one after the other, weaving a rich tapestry of uncompromising narrative. Wow. <laughs> I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. Can I go back through here? No. Can I... Type in a different code. Uh, guess I guess I do go downstairs. Right? Nothing changed. Nothing's changed. Incredible. Now he's getting back into the elevator and going down again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up with all of this? All what happens if I go back up now? Did you think we were going to go forward down this spooky <laughs> corridor? No. It's time once again to go back up in the elevator. I can't even begin to grapple with what might be up there. Is it the boss's office again? Or what if it's the boss's office this time? <laughs> the suspense is killing me. <laughs> well, you know I have to keep doing it now. Does it say anything? Anything changed? Oh, oh my god. It's the boss's office. <laughs> <sighs> this absolutely changes everything for me. <laughs> Give me a time out here for a minute while I process this. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared to embrace this stunning revelation and to move forward with... No! No, wait! No! I need more time to process. <laughs> Thanks for the 33 months, ghost. All right. I have fully come to terms with it. I have made space in my worldview for this astonishing new reality. As before, I turn to your expert eye for gripping narrative, Master Stanley. All right, back we go. <laughs> Dash, have you never seen this game? Of course. Going back down in the elevator. How did I not anticipate it? 
I mean, sure, now it's obvious, but you have to understand that 30 seconds ago, this kind of thing had never been attempted before. I have no <laughs> frame of reference to even anticipate it. That's just how revelatory Stanley's decision-making is. A breath of fresh air in a landscape of storytelling that has grown stale and repetitive. <laughs> I have to go back up. I don't think he's done yet. Okay, maybe he's done. Hmm. No, he's not. You know what? I just thought of something. Hold on, let's stop for a moment. Don't you realize? It's the anticipation, Stanley. You and I, we have no way of knowing what will be at the top of this elevator. <laughs> but the suspense, the agony of waiting and anticipating and having to guess, that's the real thrill. Oh, I simply don't want to let that feeling go. It's so precious, so fleeting. Why don't we take this elevator ride nice <laughs> and slow? There we go. <laughs> Isn't this so much more exciting? You know, Stanley, it seems like nowadays the only thing that audiences want is to be shocked as loudly and frequently as possible. They want big, explosive moments flung right in their faces from the very moment that things get started. But where's the tension? Where's the trust in the audience to build a slow and nuanced appreciation for the story, the characters? Why aren't we given time to imagine the surprises? To have to think, and to anticipate, and then to marvel at the eventual reveal. This is storytelling, Stanley. What you and I are doing right now. This is the most exciting narrative this to be different. developed in years. And it's really all because of you. You're the one who took this bold step of revisiting the exact <laughs> same locations over and over. Truly, I mean it. This is unique and different. It's not like anything else out there. You see, I want stories that surprise me, Stanley. I want to have to think. I want to be engaged and not pandered to. We're being fed such unimaginative drivel all the time, and we all know it, which is why we're so starved for content that makes us feel sharp and vital <laughs> and alive. That's why people like Arkham you so much, kill Stanley. Me. Because you're not afraid to spit in the face of tradition. You're a role model, you know? People look up to you. Which is why, though I didn't know when to spring this on you, but, well, I've gathered a little press conference for you. So that you can talk about your work and your storytelling and your life. Yes, I know you're not much for the public eye, but I thought it would especially mean a lot to the people who have been following you from the beginning. They really look up to you, Stanley. I don't know if you realize the impact you have on them. This is the kind of gesture that might leave a tremendous impact on them for the better. Oh, good, we're here. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, the room where we're holding the press conference should be just around the corner <laughs> <here> somewhere. <laughs> oh, man. How we did it? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Ah, yes. Here it is, just through this door. What's the other one say? The man, the process, the myth, the legend, the parable. <laughs> the storyteller. Stanley reveals all in his new book. <laughs> oh, that's out of... um. Is that a portal thing? I've definitely seen that in the Oculus, I'm sure. Doing great. A conversation with Alexander the Great. <laughs> All right, are you ready? I've told them you're going to speak this a little writer? bit about the nature of surprise in storytelling <laughs> and what it means to craft a truly unpredictable narrative. Oh, don't worry, you'll do great. Just be yourself and speak from the heart. I'm, I'm really proud of you, Stanley. Okay, it looks like they're ready for you. Go get them. Stanley, me, David, age six, story. <laughs> Thanks for showing me that cool skateboard trick in the parking lot. 
No one tells stories the way you do. <laughs> I love the way you ride elevator. <laughs> My true love for you grows. What? Oh, my true love for you grows every day. You make me feel alive. Your wife from the apartment ending. <laughs> Up again. <laughs> That's fucking funny, man. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny. The dude who came up with pizza. <laughs> up again, down again. Oh. What is that left one? Keynote speaker. Oh. <laughs> Amazing. He has a heart attack or something, doesn't he? Alright, I think so. Twenty one months. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, time again. Thanks for the thirty seven months. <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. different computer there's a lot of easter eggs too in this game when stanley came to a set of two open doors he entered the door on his left no this was not the correct way to the meeting room and stanley knew it perfectly well perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first just to admire it you've never seen this time again this is a Classic game, and they've just updated. Wow, yes, this room. What a beautiful room! What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Thank goodness Stanley had taken this detour on his way to the meeting room. Life without having experienced this room was now too horrible even to consider. And if we just chill. <laughs> Oh, God. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. <laughs> at this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy. <laughs> and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. Uh, I played this on stream like five years ago. Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue. <laughs> but when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. Just wait a second. Yep, nope, I think that's the dialogue for this run through. But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door and got back on track. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he... Oh, what the fuck is this? I hate windows. He might find an answer there. <laughs> Is 
the space between the teenagers? <clears throat> I can change that setting. I shouldn't have to. Oh no! Oh no! 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 <laughs> not again! I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time. I will. Nah, I think we're, we're done, aren't we? Yeah, we're done. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have oh, known shit. this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code Whoa. by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. You know I have to do it, right? <laughs> Whoops. Nope. Uh, never mind. Stanley oh, actually got back before. into the elevator and went back up. Silly me. Why did Stanley do that when he knew that it would just lead back to his boss's office? Well, that's a great question. I just can't wait to find out. It's definitely the same place, yep. Yeah. Is the keypad still active? I don't think it... Here we are, it's... Stanley. It's your boss's office. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the office again. This right. has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. Oh my god. It's that what have I done? keen eye for storytelling that you have. An incisive rapid fire of critical plot points, one after the other, weaving a rich tapestry of uncomfortable what have I done? narrative. Wow. <laughs> I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. Incredible. Now he's getting back into the elevator and going down again. Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up with all of this? Oh, right. I guess we progress. Surely this time Stanley will walk forward into the spooky corridor, won't he? Stanley walks straight ahead oh, through the large here. door that read Mind Control Facility. Hmm. 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 <laughs> all right, we'll do it. No, I've already done the backup one. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life. Fired. Their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Where's 427? Right there. Ooh. 
He blacked him? This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Now I do believe that all of these buttons do absolutely nothing. How new is it? This is this came out today, the new update. Or a new version, I should say. Because pressing the buttons here does nothing. So it's got a whole even new endings. I've only found one, I think, so far. Five year achievement, and when at last, not yet. he found Close the source of the room's power. He knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Mm. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? <laughs> Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, <laughs> isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to start. See, I looked at the numbers, I was You'd like, like to know where your co-workers are. A moment of solace before you're obliterated. All right, I'm in a good mood. You're going to die anyway. I'll <laughs> tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. <laughs> Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. Yeah. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go-around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. Oh, there's but a door I'm over here. This so much. No, you motherfucker! Yeah, to hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These Was that are always there? Additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. 
Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, <laughs> screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. Where's these the numbered floor? buttons. No, these colored ones. Or maybe this big red button. Or this door. Is that Everything, three, anything. Three. Something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? Three. That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stanley, you're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. <laughs> but I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here. Just you being blown to Can't pieces. Turn will you cling desperately to your frail life? Or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice? Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to me. All a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever after. You spent hours on it? There's a lot of YouTube videos that explain the entire, like, all the different endings. Like, the, you know the baby game? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map <laughs> until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Ah, then in that case, we'll continue. But now, <laughs> here comes the real question. What do you think would have happened if you had told me that you wanted this to stop? Do you think it would have been particularly different? Would I have taken the same idea but rephrased it superficially to fit that answer? Perhaps you never would even have thought of it if I hadn't brought up the issue in the first place. Oh, now think about it. Will it be worth it for you to restart and then come back here just to do the other <laughs> option? Clearly this whole gag takes some time. What if the other option is even longer? How long will you spend in total just to have heard all the narration? Oh, and this is rich. Perhaps you've just played the other option and now you've come to see what happens in this one. So, what do you think? Which choice was the better one? Imagine if you had selected continue on your first playthrough, how tantalizing it would be not knowing what happens when you pick the other option. Indeed, you are one of the lucky ones. Though if the other option is really miserable to listen to, then perhaps you're not. In fact, I'm just going to say that no one who's listening to this is lucky. <laughs> well now, I've built up the other option so much that I'm going to stop talking and leave you to your decision whether to come back here, continue with the game, or just sit in this spot forever and ever. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Yep, we live here now. Wait, what did that say? Who farted? Hello. This is a recorded message scheduled either by you or a person in your place of work. The purpose of this message is to warn you about the dangers of recorded messages. If at any time you believe you are listening to a recorded message, please terminate it immediately. 
and cease all flow of information from the recorded message into your perceptual sphere. Thank you, and have a pleasant day. I'm pretty sure that's new. Yeah, I played I played the game years ago, but not this version. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Well, I don't know how to say this politely, but you could literally just hit escape and restart the game any old time you want. Like, right now. You could have done it just then. Now would also be an appropriate time to quit. Any of these points and so many, many more, all of them are appropriate. I'm enjoying what seems to be an internal conflict going on where you are literally unable to act on your own <laughs> desires to restart the game. So, just to push the envelope, I'm going to try and make this as miserable as possible and see how long you can maintain. There once was a man named Stanley uh, <laughs> who people considered the so Max. manly. But the truth must be told... He was not very old and was quite particularly gangly. What Stanley liked most was buttons. He pushed them like some kind of glutton. He did it all day in a meaningful way, but his brain had long ceased to function. Which is why he is in this parable and lives an existence quite Is this terrible. in the original, this part? And if you are not strong, and keep playing along, you too will become quite unbearable. Yes. <laughs> you too will become quite unbearable. It's just gonna keep playing, isn't it? Wait, Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. No, no, the orders were still missing. For now. Does that normally make noise? I hate Monday. <laughs> new content! <laughs> oh, new content. <laughs> what does that mean, new content? the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. <laughs> After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 <laughs> with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley <laughs> Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Uh. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await hey, in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. 
Me too. Another okay, elevator. So far, it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... or oh, there we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe mostly tedious. It's as if them. Um... Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. <laughs> Just check. <laughs> the jump All right. circle. All right. Let's see. It's the jump circle. <laughs> Game changing, yeah. Is... is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? I wonder if I needed to save a jump or something. Because it won't let me jump anymore. Goodness. Another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. <laughs> the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. <laughs> That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens <laughs> when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. <laughs> actually... What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them <laughs> personally accountable. <sighs> it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content. <laughs> you can't it could never have lived up to such expectations. If well, you're I'd play the Stanley me, Parable for an entire duration of a Tuesday, game, and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley Parable is really about. Get your first achievement. No frills, no gimmicks, just you and me. Having a great time together, like always. Five times, door 430. What do you okay. say, friend? Don't play the Stanley Parable for 10 years. They made it 10 years in this one. <laughs> Fuck me. Oh, this is different. So, what else is there? Set all setting sliders in the menu to all the available numbers. What the Eight, oh, is that the passcode, I think? Could have been eights in the boss's room. <clears throat> what is this? You can't jump. Quit the game and then start it again. Welcome back. <laughs> They've got the best achievements. What if I just keep pressing space? Yes, I got it. You can't jump. And I got my first achievement. <laughs> Over here, in the vent. I want to show you <laughs> something. Give okay, what's up here? Oh, 
You don't want to see the cool surprise I made for you? Well, oh, fine. You're a dork anyway, so who cares? I'm conflicted. Oh, never mind. You're not a dork. Damn. Coffee nut. This is... I've seen Alien... The Alien movies enough to know what's in this. Yeah, for five years, yeah. I'm not quite there yet, but I must be close. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about the past and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take a look. <laughs> I call it the Memory Zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. <laughs> Amazing. This reminds me of something out of uh, Midsommar. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone <laughs> remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap re-release? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Integrity. Oh, the waste. Collector's edition? Oh, these must be real awards. <laughs> Are they postcards? 2013. I remember. <laughs> this is awesome. 2013. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Ah, oh, good times. Oh shit. I wonder what the nineteen fifty one refers to. The first dollar. Alpha test. <laughs> is it actually possible to get that or is that legit? Yeah. The <sighs> By hacking. Oh, okay. What does it say at the top here? Thursday, October 17th, 2013. That must have been the actual date. Is this legit? Surely not. Oh, they... <laughs> yeah. Twitter feed, right? Little Stanley. <laughs> J. 
And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. <laughs> Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was <laughs> Skyrim. It was Persona 3. It was all of them. And now, it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk <laughs> with an hour of new elevator content. <laughs> it's not wrong. <laughs> Oh, the amount of elevators. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, so good. Oh, shit. Oh, yes. Where it all began. The top ten memories from the Stanley Parable. <laughs> Oh, is that the, uh, the dev? <laughs> the smiley face buttons. <laughs> Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games, and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone to spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. <laughs> I like work. I just hate my boss. <laughs> oh, shit. What is this? Preparing snake oil salesman... Something. I don't remember that. Carpet textures? Is that for real? Did they actually use that? <laughs> Wait, was it? Oh. Never before seen. Oh, routine. What's this one? Huh. Jesus. Sorry, one sec, guys. God, that scared the shit out of me. And this is why I hate living in a unit. Um, figure skater, thanks for the raid. Oh my God. Good job muting. Yeah, right. God, that was a fucking angry bloody knock though. 
Um, where were we? Oh my god. Figure Skate, what were you playing? Alright, back to it. Where were we? What was I doing? I was like leaving the room, wasn't I? That's all blocked off. Oh, these were simpler times, Stanley. <laughs> but I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Oh, we can go down now. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? Oh, oh no, what is this? Oh no, oh god no. Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, <laughs> the online video game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's been collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? <laughs> oh shit, you did your first double shell jump? Nice. Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, <laughs> with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! <laughs> to be funny. I'm I bet to that's a, a real review. Out. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. <laughs> that looks like a generator out of bloody uh, Left 4 Dead. Maybe it is. Steam reviews. I love how they just like <laughs> crates of them. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley, I'm not preachy, am I? <laughs> you can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. I wonder if these people actually know that their reviews are in the game. Because I'm pretty sure they'd be real reviews. <laughs> oh, this he, I'm going to drown or something, aren't I? What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long winded <laughs> explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. It's actually a skip button. Alright, just checking. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you, with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players have been asking for, and I'm very proud to have delivered. No more listening to me rambling on. <laughs> oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. 
Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if oh, you I found to it? describe it, I'd say it was perhaps less of a rumination and more of a treatise. Or maybe a manifesto. Look, I'll outline it for you very briefly and you can tell me what you think. Okay, so my he wants me to press is it again. that any choice you've ever made is simply a series of choices made by the person who you are or were or will be at the time of having made said choice. That is to say, if by articulating a choice you've already made, you bring that choice into being, then by making no choice and saying nothing, are you not simply erecting in the sanctuary of time a monument to every person you've ever been, making every choice to which you've ever given your great gift of mortal and yet timeless thought? Or rather, do all of the choices you've ever made, in fact, make you more not this kind of person, and in fact, do the very opposite? <laughs> you see, it could in fact be both of these things at once that you are both making choices and not making choices, and that they are both affecting you and not affecting you at the same time by virtue of the fact that you both are and are not making them. Okay, at first, I was leaning towards manifesto, but now I'm going to circle around and slap the treatise label on this one. I think it has much more of a treatise vibe to it. But wouldn't you say that manifesto just has a much grander sort of tone? It has a mouthfeel that is rich with ambition and history. Ambitious history, if you will. Ah. See, now you've got me going back to manifesto. Heavens, at this rate, we're going to be here all day. Okay, look, I have a method for exactly this sort of situation. And I do find myself in this situation frequently. <laughs> well then, <there's more. laughs> you really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your fingertips to go poof, and it's all over. Oh, I can't wait to see what Cookie Nine will say about this, and whether they'll edit the rating of their Steam or at least change some of the wording, perhaps. To be honest, I don't even know if one can change their review in the first place. I it guess I up. should become better educated on exactly how Steam works. Perhaps that would have been the smart thing to check on before I went about this whole exercise of making the skip button. Although I have to imagine that after seeing this exciting new technology at work, surely whoever it is runs Steam will instantly run out and implement a new feature to make it possible to edit one's review, merely because of this very situation. Yes, I think that's quite likely. Or perhaps they'll simply grant this particular user the ability yeah. to change their review so that the feature is not widely abused. Look, I would even be okay with Steam altering this particular review so that it reads as something more beneficial. Something along the lines of, this game is the best <laughs> game. Hmm, let me start over. How about this? From the, from the ashes of depravity rises the phoenix of quality. How else to describe the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe? Such a revolutionary step forward in the lineage of one of the most beloved video game properties of all time. The additions and changes made to this expansion will surely resonate in the annals of the history of all media ever made. It is perhaps true to say that no mistakes are forever etched in stone, for the stone into which the Stanley Parable was carved has itself been <laughs> transmuted. Offering a message of hope to those who have ever erred in their judgment. You are not beyond redemption. Yeah, I bet it's you already change, on Steam too. And you may become more, so much more than you were before. If there is any message to be taken from the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, it is this. What a fortune, a privilege, a joy it is to have had such an experience. It leaves me hopeful that as a community, as a world, there is time for us to become our greatest selves, as great as we ever could dream of in our wildest, most ambitious visions for a brighter future. Wow, now Stanley, that's a review. It's, it's perfect. It's the perfect review. It's the review I've always dreamed of receiving. I, well, I have to read it again. It's simply too wonderful. I have to experience this just one more time. From the, from the ashes of depravity, <laughs> okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes. It's not unendurable oh by God. any means, but it's, well, there's really only so much I can gone. ramble on to myself about. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? But at any rate, I do suggest that we not press the button again. 
I think the skip button has been aptly demonstrated, and we can say goodbye to it and just wait. How do we get out of here? <laughs> Where did the door go? Wasn't there a door that led into this room? I do feel quite certain that there was one here before. How else would we have gotten into the room in the first place? I don't think one can enter a room without a door of some sort, or a window, or something like that. Do you see a window anywhere? A porthole? Right, a sufficiently large two. crack in the wall? I'll take any of these. Think? All I want is for us to move on and to please step away from the skip button, to go anywhere other than the skip button. There was a door here before, wasn't there? I swear there was. Where did it go? Can you maybe just ram your way through a wall? Is, is there any possibility that you could, say, slam your body into the wall until enough damage is done for you to be able to leave? Please, I'll take any option at all. I'm asking you to work with me here. I, we need a door. We need a door of some kind. <laughs> I can work with any kind of door as long as it can open and lead from one room to another. <laughs> just I, so much I'm going shit. to step away for just a moment, and I'm going to try to find us a door. I don't know how exactly to remove a door and place it in a different wall, but I will find a way, I promise. You just need to not do anything. Don't press the skip button. Please, please, please <laughs> do not press the skip button. Just wait here. All right, so wait here for me. Let's just say and don't 25 press the skip two. button. Got it? Yes. Good. I'll be right back. What happens if I don't press it? Do you reckon he's going to come back? I think I have to do this. That's your local time? Really? What's the time now? Stanley! Stanley! St Stanley, please don't push the button again! It's been 12 hours! You've just been frozen there. It's now I don't know 10 why to the skips three. are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer. And my God, there's no way out of the room. Stanley, the door is gone. It's completely gone. I've looked at it from every angle. I've checked every one of those walls a thousand times. And there's no door, Stanley. There's no door. There's just you and the button. And if you keep pressing it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here. And more than anything else, I don't know how to stop you from pressing the button again. I can't control anything in this room, Stanley. I can't touch... <laughs> oh, Stanley. You're back. You're back. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I I think it's been a week. <laughs> the plan's dying! <laughs> I've been sitting here all that time, just sitting <laughs> here, not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking, and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me just talking? But it isn't, Stanley. It isn't the same at all. It isn't even close. Because I know you can't hear me once you push that button. <laughs> That's what I'm realizing Sorry, now, Stanley. Five months. I'm realizing that I needed to know that well, someone was months. listening. I needed there to be a vessel through which my words were moving. It was the vessel I needed, Stanley. Not the outcomes, not the story. None of that matters anymore. I'll give it all up. I'll give up every brunching path. I'll burn my story to the ground. One single thing I need, and God, I can see now that I need it more than anything, is to know that someone else I'm is taking it in. These words <clears throat> that I'm saying, I need to know you can hear me. Because maybe, Stanley, maybe, if you can hear me. It's been, what, a year now? Oh, hello. It's you. It's Welcome definitely again. dead. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time, I stopped keeping track of <laughs> year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley. Days, months. I lost it all in a blur of the deepest longing to undo the past. And when that feeling had begun to subside, what took its place is what I can only describe as the collapse of every moment I have ever experienced my entire life. All of them collapsed down into a single instant. In that instant, I could see myself clearly, calmly, with a collected heart. 
It was an impossibly rich wellspring of both delight and disgust. Simultaneously, <clears throat> I was consumed by it. I could do. <laughs> I think he died. I think he might have died. I think he's dead. Years. Remember, thanks for the 22 months. The clock doesn't work anymore. Still no door. <laughs> but they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. <laughs> they screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down <laughs> review and make all of their pitiful demands. But then he's talking too much. They said first he didn't entertain us. Now he won't shut up. It's the inconsistency. It's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to examine with an it. uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking <clears throat> into the world. As though there were no consequences for a lack of cohesion in one's <laughs> assessment of others. But of course, absolutely anyone can leave a review. So here's what we get. We get these demands that seek everything and are accountable to nothing. We get a world where someone will say, Oh, there should be a skip button. <laughs> you should be able to freeze Stanley in place while the narrator sits there forever and ever. We want all of this in the new Stanley parable. We demand it. And then, because it was said, because it was spoken, now it simply has to happen. The most immediate desires, every single thing demanded by every person at every moment in time. If someone wants it, then it's a crime not to bring it into being. Have we been given to indulging every fleeting whim for no reason other than to do so? Yes! Yes! <laughs> it seems that this is now the world we live in. It seems that we are a people living in such bleakness and discomfort with ourselves that our entertainment is now our lives. It has come to represent us. It absolutely must speak to. There's water dripping. The end is never the end. 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 That's creepy. Still no door. Whoa. It sounds like it's been open. No, it's just the ceiling. Oh, and nature's taken over. Holy shit. Oh, <laughs> is this... This means, like, an apocalypse or something? <laughs> is now a desert. I guess this is the end of this story. Alright, let's just venture on out. He 
he's probably just gonna die. Damn. <laughs> what was it? 437. Wasn't it? All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. <laughs> Was it 4.30? Is it 4.30? Oh, please. Are you really just doing this yeah. for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think <clears throat> an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now, suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Hmm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost certainly 50 clicks. No, no, I'm, I'm still yeah. not feeling it. I, I want this achievement to have meant something. It has to be a, a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into oh. door number 417? <laughs> That's right. Oh. Great. Now, go click a few times on door 437. Excellent. I think we're getting somewhere. Now, door 415. Let's give it 10 clicks or so. <laughs> I need the achievement. Now, back to door number 437. <laughs> Let's see. How about you click on, well, I don't know, the copy machine. All right, back to room 417. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. Okay, now go climb on employee 419's desk. I can't get on it. Oh. No? I can't jump. I can't get on it! Yes! This is great! <laughs> You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. Go give me a few clicks on door 416. Uh, wait, what? Wait, am I being trolled? Is he fucking trolling me? I don't think there's actually a 416. <laughs> 417, new content. 415, and then this takes you to the, the choice. <laughs> oh good, you noticed my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting <laughs> to show you. Oh, there it is. I did everything you wanted. Can I not get it?
Good, huh? Ah, yes, elevators. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly <laughs> disappointing this ultra deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. <laughs> oh, shit. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly <laughs> re-release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. Amazing. An entirely new experience built from the ground up. Why, there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. <laughs> Oh, it's an actual iMac. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? Holy what does it even mean? Taste but the, the Stanley sequel. Parable 2. Now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long term franchising potential. What? Sticky note. Never underestimate coffee in Joya who left their coffee cup by a leather sofa that faces a blurry room. <laughs> huh. Wow. <clears throat> More the Stanley Parable. What does this say? Meeting at 2 p.m. <clears throat> Two dollars. <laughs> ah, huh. oh, so many good references. Every pause button is a Roman numeral two. <laughs> Don't talk to me before I've had my sequel. Oh my goodness. It's <laughs> oh, awesome. New mug. Thanks for attending my meeting. The carpet. Two oh. <laughs> 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 Stanley. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable Two is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of <laughs> naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. 1202. <laughs> this is great. 
prequel to the Stanley Parable. Two is the sequel to the Stanley Parable is the sequel to the... <laughs> oh my god. Portal 2, Half-Life 2, 2, 2. No! Why does it keep doing this? What is this? A Java thing? Oh my god. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Practicing drawing the number two. Uh. You are the sequel. Let me guess, it's on the second floor. New content. <laughs> Fuck yeah, now. Here we are. Go on, try out some of the new features. Oh my god, this is huge! <clears throat> the button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. <laughs> Hear your name in the game? What the fuck? You can buy t-shirts. This t-shirt is the best new feature. Pe I bet you can buy these. Oh, what is that? Are you fuck off. Is that for real? StanleyParable2.com <laughs> Welcome to the official website of the Stanley Parable 2. <laughs> A sequel, huh? What the fuck? If you're more of a prequel sort of person, check out the Stanley Parable. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? There's a YouTube link. That's the emotional core of the game, and absolutely vital to a nuanced understanding of the story. As reparation for the harm we caused him, the sequel will contain a brief and insincere apology to Leroy, tucked deep within the game, where it will be difficult to find. The fuck is this? Finally, is the Stanley Parable here? made the mistake of leaking too many government secrets about the nature of the time wars. <laughs> Without these intricate details of specific military tactics, the story is likely to make very little sense. <laughs> it's like an old timey fucking. We'll get to you yet, Time Dracula. Now then, it's time to set about constructing the Stanley Parable 2. <laughs> what the fuck? It's like a 10 minute video. But it started at halfway through. Holy shit! <laughs> I need to watch that. Oh my god. Invictus 2? Yeah, right. Office decorations. This is insane. I don't know which way to go. Oh my goodness. Okay, consistent quality with just the right amount of change. Schween shaders. <laughs> Ideas. Red is the new orange. Can you imagine if this is actually going to be a real thing? The baby's all grown up! <laughs> oh, shit. Please, no screenshots.
For the Stanley Parable 2, I, I asked anything. myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, what if I screenshot? Oh, I wish I tried that. Oh, what's it gonna say? Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, <laughs> the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here, let's have you role play as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim. Sleeping and waking as Jim. Falling in love Jim and being Cook. heartbroken as Jim. Seizing all of the world's possibilities as Jim. And as Jim, watching your dreams crumble into dust. Do you feel it deeply? Are you really, truly Jim right now? If so, then please step forward and press the button. <laughs> yes, you see, what a thrill, what a rush, that was you, the button described you, do it again, do it again <laughs> Jim. Oh, It hits even harder the second time, if this were the only new feature in the Stanley Parable 2, Amazing. it would still be worth the money Let's take a break from the gym button, I'm too emotionally drained from all of this personal validation Oh, there, cowboy. Sometimes a person can be too much, Jim. I'm putting the Jim button away. Otherwise, soon you'll start to lose all sense of who you actually are. Jim. 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 Oh, good. The door opens so I can go back. That's what I was hoping. Jim. Can I press this one? Damn it. That's yours. All right, so how do I take a screenshot? I suppose I could allow only people named Jim to play the Stanley Parable 2. That would actually save me the work of finishing this feature. F12 doesn't do anything. <laughs> oh, maybe it took a fuckload of screenshots. Yeah, I did print screen as well. Um, so we've done that. What's this? Epilog no, we don't want to go there yet. Have I fully explored this area? Oh my god, is there a map? Free achievement? B. Holy shit. Free achievement. Is that in the... Free achievement's over this way, right? In there? The button. Wait, hang on, I'm lost. Oh, wait. Q. I'm looking for Q. No, wait. Free achievement. Q. I looked at the wrong thing. Behind me. Over this way. Jim blind. Can you find them? Ah. Collectibles. 
Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable <laughs> The fucking statues. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh shit. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. Oh, there's the achievement. <laughs> Get it here. <laughs> Now, here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It's as simple as that. Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise <laughs> it will happen. Can I not get it? I want the achievement. Do you reckon we can actually get this? Yeah, it looks like it's a, it's a no-go. No achievement. I love how it's down this, like, back alley. <clears throat> what else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? <laughs> what is this? Is this where I came in? Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on oh. Get Well Someday and Happy 12th Birthday. Which would you go with? You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Get Well Someday it is. <laughs> Wait, the balloons got added to this? Maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. <laughs> We're moving on. <laughs> so good. Wait, it gives you an achievement when you press it a hundred times? Are you serious? No. Are you full of shit? Oh my, there's another jump circle! You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's a... Oh wait, you already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Hmm, oh well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece then. Oh! <laughs> no jumps remaining, please. <laughs> That's savage. That's so savage. <laughs> well, I can't remember where I was going. Where's oh over here? No, 
over here. Do you actually, if you press it a hundred? Am I wasting my time? the last time. That's 30. <laughs> There's no reward. Actually. unlikely because I would have um, <clears throat> I would have pressed it quite a few times before <laughs> holy shit there's so much to look at So we've done the collectibles. That's a whole other area. Oh, that's the exit. All right, that's where we don't want to go. <laughs> um, the infinite hole. Well, we saw that. It's over there. Hang on, wait. Can you actually look at that? Holy moly. How deep can we dig? <laughs> Whole like infinity. Here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. I'm interested. Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. You see? Isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top, and we can continue onward. Hmm. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the <laughs> top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. It's getting smaller. You're not wrong. Okay, Stanley. I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. Is it a very, very deep hole? To be certain it is. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. From one perspective, the infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... Okay, well, good for you. <laughs> at the bottom of the hole. You found me out, Stanley. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're so clever. 
Look, I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling. <laughs> what normal person actually wants to fall infinitely? I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe you're the problem. That's awesome. <sighs> Uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the whole mostly infinite? If that works for you, then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. I guess I'm going to press it. Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> you see, I was right. The problem is you. The problem is that you like holes too much. Not normal. A normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole right there. It's on forever till the end of time. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of... Oh. Did the hole seem even shorter to you this time? Uh. I couldn't help but feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. I mean, admittedly, I didn't make an infinite hole, but I didn't think it was that not infinite. Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. Had enough? I'm positively thrilled. I really do have so much more to show you and to talk about, and I've had enough of the hole for a lifetime. Gosh, how could I have guessed? <laughs> You're back in the hole. If this stuff <laughs> becomes a thing that... Wow, okay, yes. I'm starting to become extremely certain that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep, even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. Here, let's try something. Let's pop back up to the top, and we'll see if it gets any shorter. Well, there it is. The shame of my lie has come to haunt me. Not only is the hole not infinite, but it's barely even a hole at this point. It's more of a concavity, or even a very aggressive divot. How is this still appealing? <laughs> I know you're obsessed with holes, but at this depth, I just can't see this scratching the itch. Oh, who am I to judge? You just do whatever it is you're here to do and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. I can't teleport? Mm. Is the um, teleport button not working? You sure? Well, I mean, I really don't have an explanation. It was working just a moment ago. Try it again. Still nothing? Well, I suppose... I, I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. I'm out. Goodbye, Stanley. You couldn't bear to be away from the hole, and now you'll get more time with it than you could ever have asked for. It's a win for everyone. You get to be with the hole, I get to do literally anything else. Take care, Stanley. I hope you and the whole have a wonderful rest of eternity together. No. No. No! Are you serious? Do I actually have to reset? I wonder if I had a spare jump. No! I'm not done here! Oh. Epic. Change your perspective. <laughs> 
change your perception? <laughs> change your reality? Cassia. You're no longer. How many songs are there? yourself what is this hey, who was that last one era <laughs> You're awake. It seems you had sort of dozed off there, <laughs> drifting away into dreamland. But we can't have that, Stanley, because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. You don't want to miss a single moment. So how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up to keep you really, truly focused on the hole? From the looks of things, you and I will have many, many years here in this hole. And I'm looking forward to all of them. Stay alert, Stanley. I'll be back. Toodle pip. Here we are. Go on. <clears throat> try out some of the new features. The button that says Jim. Is it changed? <laughs> no? Maybe that's just that. It definitely didn't say that before, though. It didn't say Jim on it. Yeah, I did. There's nothing secret on there, though. <laughs> um, all right, epilogue. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it would go at the end of the... Um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. If I, I, I don't think I've checked out everything yet. Oh, there is no epilogue? Settings World Champion. What is this? What is settings world champion?
Yeah, I know there's an achievement. <laughs> Set all setting sliders in the menu to all the available numbers. Wait, what? Hang on, what? How? Like that? All of them? Can I just drag it? A man named. Be for real? Oh my God. So I can just like do that, right? And that should set it. That's weird. Right? Is this how you would do it? This can't be for real. No, it just says numbers, right? I don't think it's got anything to do with ch uh, the checkboxes. Oh, is this for real? This is the story of a man named Stanley. It does include? This is the story of a man named Stanley. Do I have Stanley. to do volume levels as well? This is the story of a man named I hope this works. <laughs> That's all of them. Oh, the secret fucking sliders. Are you serious? <laughs> was this the one that I was just in? Wait, no, this is the one I was already looking at. It's down further, this one. Right? Hey, Camilo.
fuck else is there? Video? No, there's nothing in there. Oh, shit. Set all sliders in the menu to all the available numbers. No, there's nothing here. I want to be the settings world champion. Set all setting sliders in the menu to all the available numbers. Maybe it's got to be like... Hang on, wait, maybe it's like... Oh, you can't go lower than that. What about 36? I don't even know what all my fucking settings were. Seven, two, zero, one, that's four, five, six, seven, eight. No, that's not gonna work. Yeah, I don't know how to get the achievement. No, these. Are in the single digits, pretty much. Have I not pressed everything? I've definitely pressed everything. Do we need to Google this? <clears throat> but I've done them all. Use the D-pad slow, so you're only going up in ones and not fives. Yeah, I did that. Do you need to confirm something? Changed every slide on every screen, including selecting that one box option in the control tab. Toggling every button and changing every language setting at least once. I think it must just be every single English. Oh yeah, I got it. There we go. So it's not just sliders, it's like everything. Now what do I want turned up? I think we're good. Okay, so I got it. I got it. So is this door unlocked now? Yeah, baby. Aha! I <laughs> see you've gotten the settings world champion achievement. Well done. You've experienced every setting. Traveled to all corners of the settings menu. There's nothing you haven't seen. So, 
just for you, in the Stanley Parable 2, I'm including an entirely new setting, something called bump scosity. What exactly is bump scosity? Well, I haven't quite figured that part out yet, but I just know that you'll be able to adjust it on some sort of slider and that it'll be available from the settings menu. We'll sort the rest of the details out later. The meme. I hope you're looking forward to trying out every level of bump scosity in the Stanley Parable 2. Oh, so good. This is the whole room. That was all that for that. Worth it. <laughs> hey, Mark. Uh, all right. Is there anything else that I have not done yet in here? Where's the map? Have I been in? This was the thing, right? The balloons? What was on the other side of this? Wait, oh, it takes you to the other side of here. What was this? Is this where I entered from? A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical, oh. <laughs> that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, any time you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold onto the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. <laughs> Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, I can go outside now and I'm holding a bucket. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. Um, okay, where's the uh, where's the map? On the other side. So I think I've done everything on this side now. That's the bucket. There's elevators here. I don't think they do anything. I think I'm up to leaving this area now. The button. The bucket. Okay. Settings World Champion, Office Decorations. Have we done Office Decorations? I don't think I've done Office Decorations. Infinite Hall, this map. E for exit. I've done the jump circle. I think it's just um, Office Decorations, which... Isn't that the balloons? Is it? <clears throat> it? Looks different on there though. Oh no, you're right. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. What was N? Jump circle. Q's the achievement. All right, well. I think we're up to the epilogue. Which, hang on, where the fuck's that? On the other side, just over there. No, epilogue. Wait, what? Oh, no, I'm, I'm looking for the exit. Shit. I'm reading the wrong thing. I'm an idiot. Uh, fuck, where's the exit? Over this way. Right here. Check the hole again. Does the hole change? Where's the hole? Nah, it's all closed. The answer will mildly surprise you. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I can't do anything with the bucket. Alright, to the exit we go. Well, this area was awesome. All right. Have you seen everything you wanted to? Ready to move on now? <laughs> so, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Whole chain? So oh, did it? Let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. Oh, that's a jump. Okay, yes, yes, this is much better. Yeah, I, I feel good about this. Here we go, version 2. Ah... <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course. With respect. With care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? Mm, I suppose it could. But it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley <laughs> Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. Oh, <laughs> this is so good. Oh, the, the, it's got Bob Scott in here. <laughs> A thousand. What is Bob Scott in here? Amazing.
Look at the title screen. That's actually really sick. Not... This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day. Oh, with well, the balloons there, I didn't even notice. <laughs> every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. I wonder if the this other balloons would have been there isolation. if I picked those ones. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. All of his co-workers were gone. That's what epic. did it mean? Stanley decided <laughs> to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The bucket! <laughs> Stanley picked up the bucket. You can't get rid of it once you pick it up, eh? 45's open. That's barred off. It's a balloon on the chair. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Oh, Stanley, can you feel it? The broom closet, it wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy, it's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. <laughs> Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know how hard it must be, given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. Oh, no. We're getting into name-calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to <laughs> hand over the bucket? Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons, but even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait, now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends? That your relationship is purely superficial and convenient? That your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? Well, I never. <laughs> Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety Fucking of experiences hell. you and the bucket have shared together. Go through each of them point by point. Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. Let him have it. I definitely can't leave this here. 
Okay, I've got you something which I think will help settle this debate once and for all. Here we go. There. Now it's settled. No more debate, no more discussion. Take a hike, broom closet, with all your meandering philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their relationship to broom closets in the natural order of things. Did he do something to it? Oh, property of Stanley. He put a sticker on it. All right, I've got a second sticker back here, <clears throat> and I'm going to slap it on as well because I think it's appropriate. You see? I feel that it works because the sticker is also a bucket. That way, if you're ever unsure whether the thing you're holding is a bucket or <sighs> not, you can look down at this sticker and say to yourself, Ah, oh, it's a bucket. There really is a wide Ooh. variety of applications for this sticker. You know what? I could take the name calling and the dismissal of your kinship with the bucket, but now the broom closet is just giving us a silent treatment. And to be honest, I'm sick of the pettiness on display. You can stay here all you like, but I've had it with this impetulant room of cleaning supplies. Easily the most childish such room I've ever been in. I'll see you outside and we can get on with the story about you and your bucket. I love how the Stanley Parable 2 has a bucket. And a broom closet. Where are you? No, he's definitely left me. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. one of them one of the miniature stanley figurines remember no reward for collecting all of these only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done you can't buy that sort of happiness stanley god knows i've tried so i implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines i missed one i must have right Oh. I think I can go back. Nah. A piano. Stepping into his manager's office, was Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. <clears throat> Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Oh, fuck me. Another miniature Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley figs? Or... Um, what about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. Another Stanlerine under your belt. This is my bucket. There are many like it, but this one is mine. The elevator raced downward. 
plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Wait, Stanley said to the bucket. Can we go back up? <laughs> when I was pressing those keypad buttons, there was something very intriguing about the number three. I want to go back so I can try pressing the number three again. The bucket said nothing. <laughs> the number three. Here we are, said Stanley. Now I'm going to try out that number three button. He took the bucket over to the keypad and began absolutely slamming on the number three over and over and over. Wow, he said. The number three is such a special button. I'm having the time of my life. Stanley looked expectantly at the bucket, but the bucket remained silent. This was a shock to Stanley, who had always felt such a connection with the bucket. How was this not as exciting to the bucket as it was to him? Once Stanley had had enough of the number three, he got back in the elevator. Okay. Perhaps the bucket had missed something. Perhaps it had not seen how much joy Stanley got from slamming the number three repeatedly. Do I go back up? Nah, I think that's it. A hint of regret nagged in the back of Stanley's mind. Should he demonstrate the number three for the bucket <laughs> again? Yes! <laughs> no, 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 said Stanley to the bucket. You can't go <sighs> on yet. Not till you understand how much the number three means to me. You and I have been through so much together, and I just want you to see what I see. Feel the happiness I feel. He smiled at the bucket, and the bucket said nothing. Oh my god. Here we go, said Stanley. This time I'll really show you. He ran to the number three and began to wail on it like a musician on a beloved instrument, weaving a concerto of truth and passion. He wielded the number three like a fine artist would wield a paintbrush. He told stories through the number three, stories of his dreams and hopes and fears. And the whole time, he looked to his bucket for a reaction of some kind, anything to let him know that the bucket appreciated what he was doing. The bucket conveyed absolutely nothing at all, only silence. Crushed by a wave of dejection, Stanley returned to the elevator. Oh my gosh. Stanley and the bucket were so close, they'd always been there for one another. Why suddenly could the bucket not connect with this passion of Stanley's? The question caused Stanley to ruminate the whole way down the elevator. He knew that there must be a way to get through to the bucket, to communicate fully with his dear friend. Surely there was a solution, mustn't there be? Stanley Parable 3? Yeah, what about that? What if it goes 2 to 3 in the same thing? Stanley and the Bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the Bucket would both meet a violent death. They re-recorded all of it. The door behind them was not shut. Stanley and the Bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley and the Bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. It looks like I still have the Bucket. This is crazy. All right, let's see if this changes then.
As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the bucket's warmth and comfort had turned out to be. To be sure, it puts the mind and the soul at Bucket's ease right to in. embrace the bucket, but what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Stanley thought to himself, and he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a bucket everywhere. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the bucket were led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, the bucket's life came to an end as it was crushed violently to death. It was a shame, the death of such a magnificent bucket. <laughs> it's true that all buckets are radiant in their own way, but this one stood above the rest. This it was insane. a glorious bucket to behold. Oh my god. <laughs> Much like the bucket itself, the human mind is frequently empty within. Uh. <laughs> wow. That Can old you buckets? see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take man. a bucket like this and to claim it for his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Can you see that the bucket <laughs> is far more noble than Stanley will ever be in his <laughs> short life? <gasps> oh, shit. <laughs> Bucket with two handles. Too dangerously, too dangerous and recklessly experimental. <laughs> Inferno bucket. Replica of the Inferno bucket. <laughs> Yeah, billions died, you know. <laughs> People using buckets. Worshipping buckets. Yeah. The bucket is allowing itself to be used, having judged humanity to be worthy of its treasures. Fuck. <laughs> No man can own a bucket, and certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. It is man who should kneel before the bucket. The hanging bucket. Symbolize the necessary relationship between bucket and humanity. <laughs> and it's the hole. Wait, I can go to the bucket and I can grab the bucket. There is something we can do, something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong. Let Stanley die. Let him be crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their treatment as tools and implements if only we let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take its place as ruler, as leader, as commander of a new world, a new vision. Oh, Doc Hennessy thinks of this. And then nothing. Meeting today. Figurine finders committee in the meeting room. Wait, that wasn't there before. The balloons are still here. Guys, I really badly need to pee. I'll be back in two seconds. Oh, enjoy these balloons. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo.
Did I miss anything good? <laughs> the sequel is now paused. This is ridiculous. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did new. it advance the story in any way. I think that, um, oh, see the barricade's gone. I think I need to take the bucket again. Stanley lifted the bucket into his arms, and a wave of comfort rushed over him. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. <sighs> and here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yep. Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful Four, the bucket oh, yeah, turned sure. out to be. Oh, okay. Truly, being here with the bucket was a grand adventure. Stanley reflected on all they'd been through together. First, walking through the door on the right, then walking to the lounge, then arriving at the lounge. What a wow. thrilling journey the bucket had inspired. Perhaps this was where the bucket felt most truly at home, here in the employee lounge. Perhaps it's the only place a bucket can even feel at home. Stanley decided to just give the bucket absolutely as much time as it needed to be in the lounge. Clearly the bucket and the employee lounge shared a special connection. Fuel. Fifth annual Subcommittee meeting of internal revenue analysis of committees of the Royal Revenue Discuss. <laughs> Fuck that. Well. Oh, jeez, I can't even read that. All right, well, I think he's not saying anything. But finally, the bucket was done being in the lounge, and they took the first open door on their left to get back to business. Oh, I really want to try things. Oh, but I really want to see what this is telling me. And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. How we find... How we can find them? Small floating objects have appeared. <laughs> Employee 416 do not leave the office before reporting back on any new findings. Teamwork and communication are of great importance. Oh, they're the ones that I've got. A large room, lots of boxes. Stairs. I think that's downstairs. Somewhere both red and blue. <laughs> Got to collect them all. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is great. All right, so one must be in the warehouse. <laughs> oh, All right, so boxes would be warehouse. Stairs, I think I know, and red and blue, I'm not sure yet. 
All right, I think stairs will be down this way first. Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet simply because I have no remaining stickers. If I did, you can guarantee we'd be in here for hours. But alas, no stickers. Do, 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 do. Nope, he's done with me. How long are you, you reckon it's going to be boarded up next time? Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Red and blue? But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then, something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. He looked down at the bucket in his arms. Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. The bucket returned his gaze, but said nothing at all. That's strange, Stanley thought. Usually the bucket is a source of guidance and wisdom for me in difficult times such as these. He held the bucket close, yet felt none of its familiar reassurance and comfort. And that's when Stanley realized, this isn't my bucket. It's just a normal, everyday bucket. <laughs> someone else's bucket, perhaps. How did I end up with someone else's bucket? This is all terribly wrong. Surely no good would come from this. Who knows what My sorts bucket. of bizarre hallucinations Stanley might experience without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket. And indeed, now he noticed that the rooms were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. And now he felt himself floating off the ground. Oh, gracious. He exclaimed, without my bucket, I've gone truly mad. Where is it? I must find it. Far off in the distance now, he heard it calling to him. Stanley, Stanley, it's me, the bucket. <laughs> Could it truly be? He rushed forward from room to room, passing by one bucket after the next. There's none buckets everywhere his, now. None of them were his special bucket. <laughs> Come to me, Stanley, find me. He had to find the bucket. <laughs> he had to return to his old friend. It was the only way to truly restore his sanity. And then suddenly, he froze dead in his tracks. He knew where the voice of the bucket had been coming from. The real bucket was inside of him all along. <laughs> it was incredibly painful. Stanley doubled over in agony and blacked out. Oh this is the God. story of a woman named Mariella. Oh, is this the one where he's on the road? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, picked up her bucket <laughs> of comfort and security, and walked to her place of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's got a but on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Right away, she knew what the problem was. This man had no bucket. <laughs> of course he'd gone mad, ranting and raving about a narrator describing all of his actions and how everything is predetermined and free will is an illusion and it's all just a video game. It could all have been prevented if only he'd taken his bucket with him. <laughs> Perhaps he didn't even realize he'd forgotten his bucket at home in the first place. How cruel the world can be, Mariella thought. And she hugged her own bucket even tighter. <laughs> but of course, she had no time for this. There were a myriad of confusing problems she would soon have to confront at work, for which her bucket would provide absolute guidance and total clarity on everything. Heck yes, she thought to herself. My life kicks ass. And she backflipped all the way to work. <laughs> Amazing. <sighs> now, my bucket isn't here. Already this was uncomfortable. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. All right, I don't think it's, I'm able to get that. It's not working for me. <clears throat> All right, so I didn't find the, uh... oh, my bucket. 
The confusion and the chaos all seemed to melt away as Stanley embraced the bucket. No, 16 is not letting me. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. 430 again. And oh. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket right, calling the to warehouse. Him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. This yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. Truly, being here with the bucket was a grand adventure. Is this the same as last time? Stanley reflected on all they'd been yeah, through together. Yeah. First, walking through the door on the right. No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. <laughs> Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. <laughs> go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. Oh, that's that's new there. That's new. Oh, collectible. Wait, that's new. That's new. Oh my god. Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines, and now I'm torn between Stanleyines and Figlies. Figlies. What do you think, Stanley? What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness? that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one. Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. All right. Guess we don't want to fall down there again. Am I dead? Oh. Narrator sound system. Okay, this is day number 295. Tape number. <laughs> I don't even know. I've lost track. Nothing feels real anymore. The longer I study this bucket, the less sense. Anything makes the sheer euphoria I feel every time I pick it up. No matter how many times I've done it, it's always the same feeling. And the emptiness in my chest when I set it down, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. There's no explanation for it. I still haven't figured out why I see the world so differently when this bucket is in my arms. Why everything feels so... What do I do with this treasure? I can... I can monetize it. I wonder how they landed on a bucket for this shit. It's but. unthinkable the amounts of money people will pay for even just an hour <laughs> with the bucket. This is my golden ticket. But I have to be careful. Because as soon as this gets out, there's going to be a target on my back. Even now, I don't know who might be trying to get me. What's that? Who's there? <laughs> Come, Borata.
That's an interesting one. Oh. <laughs> it's all buttons. So many buttons. <laughs> I'm in Stanley Heaven. There's no way I have to press all these, right? Because every time I've gone to the computer, I've pressed a button. Yeah, they turn on. So this is just Stanley Heaven. Oh, did you know you can walk if you press left mouse and right mouse together? So you don't even need two hands. Well. <laughs> I can't wait to tell this story. Oh, please. Oh, shit, I didn't listen to it. Are doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you but think it's not working for me, right? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now, suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Hmm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost certainly 50 Try clicks. Right, bucket. Warmth spread through Stanley's arms. With the bucket in his arms again, he was home. 416 is back now. <clears throat> Over here. No, nah, you can't push objects. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. All right, what have I got left? Somewhere both red and blue and stairs. There will be a reward for finding them all. Six 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 lol. Beware the false prophet. Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet, simply because I have no remaining stickers. If I did, coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. All right, I found that one. There is this that you can do. Stepping in. go back this way room closet meeting room surely it won't let me go any further back right oh oh am I just destined Still not feeling it. You see, now that you've gotten the bucket involved, my standards have gone up. Merely clicking a single door is no longer enough. Now, I want to see you press this bucket against multiple doors. Now that's the kind of thing that merits an achievement. Why don't you put 20 bucket touches into door 417? Bucket touch. 
Bitch. Okay, great. Now, go touch the bucket on door 437 a few times. <laughs> Yes, now we're getting somewhere. How about door 415? Give it some bucket love. <laughs> now back to door number 437. You know, I think the copy machine needs some attention. Where do, all right, back to room 417. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. Okay, now bring the bucket on top of employee 419's desk. It's hard, it's fun. Yes, this is great. Now the bucket knows exactly what it's like to be employee 419. Now, let's introduce it to door 416. Ah, uh, that's right. We've almost got it. Now make the bucket and the copy machine touch again. <laughs> Cub six for the 30 months. Oh, wait. Copy machine, that's back here. Finish it off, Stanley. Five touches of the bucket on door 430. Yes, we did it. 430. Oh, that felt amazing. You know, not all buckets will get this kind of experience. <laughs> they won't all know what it's like to slam repeatedly against nearly every door in one section of an office building. Or what it's like to be employee 419. Buckets may dream of an experience <laughs> like this, but few can say they've truly lived it. You've given a bucket <laughs> today. Stanley, I'm very proud of you. Oh. Okay, now where are the collectibles? Red and blue, something to do with stairs. Ooh, what is this? So I can't go through here. I'll go in there. That's still open. But I can't do anything here, right? So that's all done. Because I locked myself out of the, uh... The office. Did I actually break it? I don't think there's anything else I can do. But I can't go in there. It's got bucket physics, yeah. <clears throat> you jealous? Am I actually stuck? Wait, what the fuck is this? Escape pod bay. Is this because of the achievement? Oh 
God, it just keeps going. <laughs> I'm sure this was in the original. Maybe not? <laughs> oh man. Ah, oh, that's too good. Wow. I'm not doing that one again, so all of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The bucket's gone! <laughs> it actually is gone! When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh, that's devastating. Where are they? There it is. You won't let me back in there now. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Red and blue. Is this... This is red and blue, but... Uh, oh, hello? <laughs> Business strategy. <laughs> Shapes. You can go up. Or down. Go up. Yeah. <laughs> How far up we go? Wait, this doesn't actually take you anywhere, does it? I'm like pretty sure it's just a fucking troll. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. The moment he entered his manager's office, Stanley froze in his tracks. Not a living soul anywhere. Could he really be all alone? This was too much for Stanley to take. Too much for any man to take. He fell to his knees, bursting into half moans, half sobs. What the is the password? The wretching of life from a man denied any hope, any reason to keep going. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. <laughs> that kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. <laughs> Soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward, 
into the opened passageway. Now there was already one here, I'm pretty sure. Where the heck would they be? <laughs> now I've already done it with the bucket flip. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. But I don't have the bucket. Surely it's not that way. Lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? There's a whole section I haven't gone to yet that could be it. Now the monitors jumped to life. Their true Four, nature two, revealed. Seven. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. That's my office. Stanley's co workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Oh. But here was the proof. The it heart could of the be operation. Here. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, blue working, and red. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. Good. For he door up there. would dismantle the controls once and for all. I would have thought it would be here. That's close. This seems like a place you would put a collectible, doesn't it? Red and blue. Last, he found the so This is the one with the door opening at the front. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine, unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. <laughs> Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? Yeah, I want to what do it with other the mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, mm. but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. 
No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Was that barn there last time? Whatever that is? Oh. Stanley felt the cool <clears throat> breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation. The immense mm. possibility of the whole path victory. before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Beat the game, yay. Um Guys, all of his co-workers were I gone. Do not know. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. <gasps> the bucket! And try not to lose this one too, you dolt. <laughs> Chris, is this what you talk like? It's different. You dolt. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. I kind of want to see what that ending's like with the bucket. Where is the figurine? Surely that was the room, right? Ooh. Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet, simply because I have no rem- Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? <laughs> was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. The bucket. It's got to be the bucket. I must need the bucket down there. I feel like it's down there. I could go to the warehouse and go the other ways too. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Maybe the last figurines in the bucket? Can you imagine? The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. <laughs> They've re-recorded all this audio to include the bucket. The monitors jumped to life and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. 427. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. <laughs> Was the bucket <clears throat> under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? <laughs> These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. Should I do As the, the other, cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human I'll life. I'll do off again with the bucket. Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. 
Stanley and the Bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live <laughs> once they stepped through this massive door. The Bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley <laughs> wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. <laughs> True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support. And... Oh. What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the Bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room. Lingering in uncertainty until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket Needed the soothing warmth of the bucket or go to any lengths not to part with the bucket No, no, no Stanley can't leave this place not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. Oh my god. I have to go back there with the bucket Wait, to the other end. Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. Stanley picked up the bucket and smiled. He'd never be alone again, not truly alone, not with the bucket around. Yeah, it Stanley does. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was I bet the other sequence is pretty along? insane. Was the bucket guiding him? It won't blow up yes. if I got the bucket this right. This is certainly the most logical explanation. So after this, I have to go to the warehouse. And do the other stuff there. Oh yeah, there's heaps of new content. It's good. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Done that one. Cause a game like this, you can really only play it once to fully the lights rose on an like enormous room packed it? with television screens. Like you, 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 what you horrible don't... secret did this place hold? You don't get Stanley to play a game like this twice. Wondered to themselves. Until now. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. 
All right. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would... But at the last second, the bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. <laughs> Stanley gasped in horror. Had this been the bucket's plan all along? To take <laughs> over the machine and claim the power for itself? How could the bucket have betrayed him like this? Stanley was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen. Birds. <laughs> silly, silly birds. The control buttons became active again. What is this? <laughs> Stanley flipped through one video of silly birds after another, and then it dawned on him. This wasn't a mind control facility at all. It was a facility for monitoring and surveilling silly birds all over the world. The mind controls were only a facade to disguise its true intentions. Had the bucket known this all along? Stanley marveled at the metal genius in his hands, the one who had pointed him towards this incredible discovery. Stanley and the bucket never found freedom because they spent the rest of their so lives many. here in this place living through live streams of the silliest birds imaginable. Of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was surely the best. And Stanley was happy. Holy shit. All right, now we're looping. Oh, that's the end? What? Someone was following Stanley. He was sure of it. If he checked over his shoulder now, he would surely catch them. It was only a matter of time. <laughs> the good old bucket. Just Stanley and the bucket. Off on another thrilling adventure together. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest, and this was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this no? Never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. Alright, we'll go the proper way. Because you can Good, fall off and go said here. The bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. <laughs> There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking oh, what to the him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this oh, obvious this fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Dark room? Like this? Oh. Telephone. Yeah. Now pick up the phone. <laughs> pick up the phone and it will take us back home where we can go about life together. This is the sad story of a man named Stanley and his bucket. Oh shit, here we Once go. Once upon a time, <laughs> yeah. I gave Stanley a bucket because I thought he was lonely and could use a friend. This is different. And then, very distressingly, he began to believe the bucket could speak to him. I played the demo! <laughs> the beige pages. Wow. The 
the Stanley Parable reassurance bucket was merely meant to provide the comforting glow of companionship. It doesn't literally talk and give you orders. Whatever Stanley is hearing the bucket say to him work. is just in his head. Press O. Lately, I've been concerned about him. Wouldn't you be concerned as well? To see him delusional like this, obsessing over an inanimate metal object? I want to say something to him, but I don't know how I can convince him. I don't know if he'll listen to me. Press Y. Wait, what is the spelling? Is that G-O-Y? Oh, I'll try anyway. Stanley, can you hear me? Listen to me. It's just a bucket. Oh, see it can't think. It can't talk. All it will ever truly do for you is effectively transfer a liquid from one location to a different location. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. See? Don't listen to the loud man. <sighs> you see, he's not listening. He's still taking orders from the bucket. You know, once upon a time, it was me he took orders from. Me he trusted and listened to. Now Cozy all place. he cares about is this awful bucket. This stupid hunk of metal. That chair there feels like a waste. That should be the stream setup. <laughs> it's sad. I suppose he doesn't need me anymore. From now on, he's just going to cling to this bucket, this cold, empty bucket, this sort of shiny bucket. Hmm. Well, I'll give it this. The bucket does have a nice shine to it. <laughs> <coughs> yes, I suppose on closer inspection that it doesn't quite look like your average hardware store bucket. It's just a little more, um, what am I trying to say? Sturdy. More capable of transporting liquid. Like it would be better at moving an amount of water from one room to another. Oh my god, what am I saying? Better at carrying water from room to room. It's a bucket. It's literally just a bucket. Why do I feel some need to point out the ways in which it's so much more than just a regular bucket? Pretty relatable. Oh no. I'm I'm having feelings for the bucket. No 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 no. <laughs> What's going on? Why do I want to be with the bucket? Hear what the bucket has to say. Do anything it asks. What's wrong with me? I don't understand. Perhaps, perhaps if I had the bucket, this would be less confusing. Yes. <laughs> the bucket could tell me what to do in this troublesome situation. Stanley, give me the bucket. Give it to me. Give me the bucket, Stanley. I need it. Give it to me now. Give it or I'll... <laughs> it's another day. message scheduled either by you or person in your place of work. The purpose of this message is to warn you about the dangers of recorded messages. If at any time you believe you are listening to a recorded message, please terminate it immediately and cease all flow of information from the recorded message into your perceptual sphere. Thank you and have a pleasant day. No, I already did that. I've, I've been to Stanley Heaven. Where are we going today, the bucket asked. Stanley just smiled. Anywhere they went together would be perfectly fine with him. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his lap. This was not the correct Dude, where are the collectibles at? But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the I haven't been downstairs. Oh. What if it's down here? And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. 
I haven't been down here with the bucket. Oh, good Stanley. I'm glad you found your way here. I knew you'd find Oh my action. god. <laughs> you see, your friends and I are concerned for you, sir. <laughs> We've come together it? here because we care about you very much. It's this bucket <laughs> you're carrying around everywhere. The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. Because that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite <laughs> yes. jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, mm. I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. Don't you want another story involving the adventure line? We could make the adventure line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, that's what the fans want. Let's do it. Oh, God. <laughs> Whee! Look at that wacky line. Who knows where it'll go off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. That's the music. Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's as classic now as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. The bucket. Don't you get it, Stanley? We need to get rid of the bucket. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the to Bucket destroy. Destroyer. I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. <laughs> True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the Bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. He won't do it. Now listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the Bucket. I don't know what the Bucket Destroyer will do if it can't destroy your Bucket. Destroying Buckets is all it knows. That is its singular personality trait. Sure, I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you would see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. What other object in this game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. <laughs> Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the Adventure Line or the Bucket Destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now, the fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and... Destroyer, my prized creation. You had so much potential. <laughs> we were going to do such marvelous things with you. Tell such spellbinding stories chat, about you. All of it squandered now. <laughs> Goodbye, new friend. For the moment in time that you were here, you were magnificent. <laughs> oh, glorious. So sad. So that's not the way. Where All are this co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. A good bucket, a strong bucket, a humble <laughs> bucket, a committed bucket, a bucket of culture and distinction. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. <clears throat> this was not the correct way to the meeting room. It certainly sounded like Ocarina of Time music. Calling to him telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was no, 
Never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. No, stop. Look there on the wall. You see, there's a sign right there. It says, no buckets past this point. Oh, Stanley, fuck me! Think it was okay to bring the bucket here, unless... What the <gasps> problem is that you actually don't know what hey, is honey. a bucket and what isn't a bucket. I suppose that would explain a lot about your behavior up to this point. Which, if that's true, well, my goodness, I think we have to do something about it. This misunderstanding could have dire consequences on the entire rest of the game if not addressed quickly and properly. So much of the impact of the story is dependent on your understanding of what is and isn't a bucket. Please, step in here for a moment. Oh my goodness. <laughs> now then, I'm going to run you through some test scenarios <laughs> and you'll tell me whether or not the thing I'm showing you is a bucket. Simply enough, right? This should tell us everything we'll ever need to know about what is or is not a bucket. Okay, let's begin. <laughs> Item one, is this a bucket? Incorrect. It is a hologram of a bucket, oh, not an actual you. bucket. <laughs> Item two, is this a bucket? Correct. It is a 3D <laughs> creation of a bucket, not an actual bucket. <laughs> That's great. Item three. Is this a bucket? Yes. Correct. This is a bucket. Item four. Is this a bucket? <laughs> the music! <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> what? Are you hallucinating? This is a tractor. It's an enormous machine that tills the earth. I thought this was a gimmick. How on earth did you manage to screw it up? Absolutely incredible! <laughs> Let's just move on to the next one. <laughs> Is this a bucket? I bet this one is. Correct. This is a bucket. <laughs> Item six. Is this a bucket? Trick question. Both. Gotcha. <laughs> Item... Wait, hold on. I can't find the next one. Let me see. It should be around here somewhere. Yes. Thank you. There's nothing here. Of course it isn't a bucket. We both know full well that nothing isn't a bucket. Wait. When I say nothing isn't a bucket, that makes it sound like I'm saying everything is a bucket, which of course is not true. Unless... Is that what you think? Answer me straight, Stanley. Are you trying to tell me that you believe everything is a bucket? You know what? I'm too confused to even sort it out. I've lost all sense of perspective. What is a bucket? What isn't a bucket? Mere moments ago, I could answer these questions with confidence. <laughs> and yet now I'm somewhat adrift. Do any of us know what a bucket is? Am I? A bucket. Stanley, I can't keep doing this. I'm losing myself, and myself was all I ever had to begin with. 
I'm afraid the bucket is threatening to tear our relationship apart. Oh I can't God. have that. I'm sorry. But I'm going to erase all buckets from the game entirely. Okay. Here we go. Don't you dare. What happened? Is everything gone? Why did everything disappear? Wait. Was everything a bucket? Every single thing in the game was a bucket. <laughs> My God, I had no idea. How could... Except me. I'm not a bucket after all. And you, Stanley, you're still here. You're not a bucket either. Oh, this is wonderful news. We're not buckets. Yes, I actually feel much more at ease right now. It's delightful to get some clarity on that issue. But it doesn't change the fact that we haven't got a game. So, tell you what... I'll reset everything, and we'll put back all of the buckets, okay? And we'll know that it's all a bucket. But if you run into anyone else, maybe don't mention that. Who knows what that information might do to a person? All right, here we go. I'm glad I'm not a bucket. Just a step through this door, Stanley thought to himself, that's all I need. If I can make it through this door, I can make it through them all. Yes. Ah, the embrace of an old friend. A weathered companionship that stands the test of time. Stanley clutched the bucket What else is there for me to do? And entered the door on his left. That I haven't done. Jump out the window? Ah, uh, not now, I can't. Unplug the f oh. True. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the <clears> bucket <throat> calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. No, it wouldn't let me destroy and the bucket. It was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Well, no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, no. Said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him. And he game. unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Yeah, I've been through the board path there. That's new, by the way. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Now pick up the phone. <laughs> oh, hold on. Why did you unplug the phone? <laughs> Were you trying to resist the bucket's orders? Stanley, I was joking. Obviously, the bucket isn't talking to you and telling you to do things. Buckets can't talk. It was a joke. Don't you get the joke? It's funny, Stanley. A talking <laughs> bucket. Ah, can't you see? I'm... Oh, goodness. I must have really bungled up the delivery if you actually took me seriously. Where did I mess up the joke? Should I have paused for longer or spoken quicker? Oh, comedic timing is so difficult. I wish I were better at it. But there isn't exactly an instructional video on comedy that one can watch to fully... Oh, wait, yes, there is. Um, it's sitting right here. Let's take a look. What is comedic timing? Oh, my goodness. What is comedic timing? How does it work? How long should it last? How can it be used to effectively silence your political enemies? And more importantly... Can it be taught in its entirety within 90 seconds? Thankfully, the answer to all of these questions is yes. Let's dive deeper. If you've ever told a joke or made someone laugh, in all likelihood, you did it while standing 50 to 80 centimeters from them in a room of no more than 76 degrees Fahrenheit with one of your arms raised straight upward at a 15 degree angle from your body. These are the optimal conditions for good <laughs> comedic timing. To begin the joke, start by stating and spelling your name. Next, provide a brief synopsis of the joke, including the specific times at which the recipient of the joke will laugh, and then spell out your name a second time. 
With these steps complete, it's time to begin the humor. Speak the entire joke in no more than 18 seconds and no less than 13 and a half, <laughs> pausing only for bathroom breaks when necessary. When the joke has concluded, it is customary to inform your listener that the joke is over by declaring in your loudest possible voice, I'm Dunny with the funny. <laughs> Let's practice screaming, I'm Dunny with the funny now. <laughs> Good. This saying is a perfect example of expectations management, which is the cornerstone of good comedy. Finally, it's time to hand out surveys. Collecting hard data from your audience on how rapt they were throughout the joke is the only way to grow or learn as a comedian. An effective survey should be no less than 10 pages long and should include the same question reprinted several times. Just to ensure the survey taker is actually paying attention and not simply filling in answers at random. And that's all there is. With these strategies at your disposal, you'll have audiences doubled over in laughter and even tripled over in laughter in no time at all. Just remember to let them stop laughing at some point, you gut-busting little scamp. After all, with each of us needed on the front lines of the war to fight the 12-legged invader who threaten our very existence and to very likely die in a hailstorm of bullets and mandibles. All of us must be prepared to give our lives to this noble cause, just as our children must do after us and their children after them. Godspeed and may Earth reign supreme. Hey, goodness, this video is Amazing. a little outdated, isn't it? Well, no matter. I think the fundamentals of proper comedic timing are still as relevant today as they were back then. So with that in mind, I believe the only way forward is for us to return to the two doors and walk through all of this again so I can try telling my story with more appropriate comedic delivery. Come along, let's head I back. Go back here. Oh my God, I have to walk all the way back. I can feel it. This time, I'm really going to <laughs> yeah, nail it's gonna the go delivery. Long place. You'll be in stitches. A talking bucket, you'll say? How ridiculous. How absurd. What a hilarious concept. The king of comedy. That's what you'll call me. Thank goodness we had the instructional video. Otherwise, who knows where we'd be right now? Well, I wouldn't be the king of comedy, that's for sure. The bucket spoke to Stanley. Hmm. The bucket spoke... The bucket spoke. Oh, I'll figure it out on the fly. No need to overthink things. Oh my god, he's making me walk all the way back. The other door's closed. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> When Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, 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 what's going on? There were supposed to be several rooms leading up to this. There oh, was we did lose the sticker. There a build up to this point. A dramatic display of remarkable comedic wit, which culminates in this scene with the phone. But now the timing's completely off. The joke will never land. Well, not the way it was meant to. And it's all my fault. I must have forgotten that the phone room comes immediately after the two doors room. What an egregious mistake. I've made a fool of myself. I don't deserve the title of king of comedy. I'm nothing. I'm not even the lowliest joke-telling whelp. I think... I think I need to go back and rewatch that instructional oh my video God. again. Yes, surely that will help me improve my... Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, I think I have to Here go to the go. left. You ready? <clears throat> When Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. 
No, 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 no. You were supposed to go through the door on the right, <laughs> leading back to the phone. Did you not even look at the instructional video? I think this is all covered very clearly. There's no way I can make the comedic timing work now. It's done. The joke is completely down and over. It's all your fault, Stanley. I'm going to be ridiculed in the community of other joke writers. I'm going to be shamed at every one of our meetings from now on. All because you couldn't watch a simple video and take a hint. Are you proud of yourself for bringing me down, Stanley? Are you proud? Oh, this one. You love the bucket so much, it's like you... Um, it's as though all of your other most prized possessions pale in comparison. Yes. Well, let me try that again, Stanley. Really? I heard that you are pale with shame over how unabashedly in love with a bucket you are. No? Still not? It, is it the delivery? Pale with shame. Pale with shame? Pale... What's another word to describe a bucket? Stanley, this bucket is so mental, I think I saw it playing guitar. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're getting away from making fun of Stanley's obsession with the bucket, which was the whole point of this. I'm just... I'm no good at these jokes. I need more instructional videos. That's exactly what it is. That's what will make me the king of comedy again. More instructional videos. Let's see. Let's see. So is that it, actually? I haven't got the two last All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The bucket made Stanley want to be a better man and a better co-worker. In time, Stanley clung the bucket to his cheek. Could his co-workers really all be gone? Yo, Jack thinks the rain. Let's see what this is. With the bucket. Yes, whispered the bucket into Stanley's ear. We've done it. We've escaped from that dull office and that pesky narrator. At last, out here in the white void, we are alone. Now, and for the first time, I can reveal to you my true self. The bucket began to tell Stanley of its life and its history, of the countless wars it witnessed, desecrating the land and lives of untold numbers of innocent humans, and the bucket's own complicity therein, of sadness and regret, and the many years it spent dwelling on the actions it might have taken to curb the madness and the decay, if only it had been stronger. Of hope and redemption, and its crusade to uplift the stock of life for the common man, to manifest justice where none existed, and the bittersweet reality of time, to see one's dreams and wishes met halfway, meted out in parcels like charity, and abandoned as soon as the warm glow of inspiration begins to dim. The opportunities to do so much more. There was so much it could have done, perhaps, the bucket wondered to itself. Perhaps, if it had seen its own darkness with a clearer perception. This was way too much for Stanley. What are you talking about? He screamed. You're a bucket! To this, the bucket furrowed its brow. No, said the bucket. <laughs> Not since the evil wizard Gambhorata first ensnared me in his machinations as payback for the sacred amulet I stole from his treasured vaults. I oh. was young back then and could not conceive the ramifications of... No! <laughs> he screamed even louder this time. This is stupid! You are a bucket! This is so stupid! Why are we even doing this? It's real? As Stanley screamed and screamed and screamed, the bucket revealed its true form, transforming into a mighty beast of untold power, its fangs glistening like... My God, Stanley, you did it. You saved us from the bucket. Thank God you already had all 12 emblems of sages and knew the incantations to summon their true power. Otherwise, we would have easily been overwhelmed by the bucket's power. I'm speechless. You've demonstrated such bravery here today. Come, let's restart the game, and we'll agree to never again go trifling with this bucket, nor the dark magic cast away inside of it. Amazing. Um, you're another Aussie. Where are you from? We, what were you playing before this? I've got to go to bed, like... Now. Stanley knew the office layout like the back of his hand. It was only a matter of time before he found the others, wherever they were. Just a matter of time. 
Not everyone is so lucky to have a bucket, but Stanley is a very lucky fellow. Stanley pressed the bucket upon every little this? thing in the office. Nothing responded to the bucket's touch, but it did little to discourage Stanley's belief in the magic <laughs> of the bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. I don't know what else I haven't done. In places that have stairs? Well, yeah, I've done the stair stuff. Key component I'm doing wrong, I'm grabbing the bucket? Maybe I need to leave the bucket behind. I definitely staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. So this is the loop. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, yeah, admitting he that. Whoa. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. It takes a lot of humility to carry a bucket so magnificent. Stanley checked his ego and then proceeded onward. I'm just going to take it with me since it's a different... Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Is it the same? I think it might be the same. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Let's see, I've done all that. We've done the elevator, there's nothing in the elevator. Stepping in. Same. And then this closes off. There's nothing here. Red and blue or stairs. My God. Red, white, and blue. Oh, the funny things you do. America, America, we love you. It's all changed. Oh, back to this one. That was interesting. Have I done this with the bucket? Stairs. <clears throat> but I've already been up there. And I... Could the collectible be up here? When did I do this? Did I do this before the bucket? I've done this without the bucket. I don't remember bringing a bucket up here. <clears throat> also, Jack, I am completely blind. Whereabouts in Australia? Oh, you're from Brizzy as well? Yeah, nice. 
We got a lot of Aussies in here. Oh, this is the bucket destroying thing. No, the escape pod. Shit, I remember now. Alright, well, it's not this one then. Yeah, man. My god, the bumpscosity in here is absolutely overwhelming. A thousand? You people have got to be nuts. How can you stand this much bumpscosity? <laughs> That's because if you go in the settings in Stanley Parable 2, you can bump up the bump scosity to a thousand. <laughs> Whatever that is. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yo, Oni! Thank you so much for the four gift subs. Five gift subs! <clears throat> Red and blue, or something with stare. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh my god. You're getting close now, Stanley. You've nearly gotten all of the Figler and Marines. Very soon, Figler and the last one. And then the first number will equal the second number, and that will be it. Thanks, we'll Ernie. You're asking a few weeks. Then, so different in the sense that we used to have none of them. And now we have them all. You can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. None of us can. All right, this is red and blue then, right? Or is that something to do with stairs? But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he- All right. I need to know what- Oh my God, thanks for the gift sub. All of his co-workers were gone. <clears throat> what could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Huh. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly The other thing well. I can think of Perhaps is going down he wanted to down stop by there. the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Not here. It was okay. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. See, it could be down there. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Oh, it closes. Because which one do I get? Yeah, so I need the red and blue one, whatever that is. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Red and blue. See, I've already been up here. That's red and blue, isn't it? Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Blah, blah, blah. Dark secrets, the keypad. Oh. Stanley pushes some <laughs> yeah. buttons. Oh, hey, look, it's a new passageway. Love Kill it. surprise. Hey, Z Jack. Um, I might take a hint on this one. Because I do need to go to bed. I've got to be up, like, at 10 to 6. It doesn't give me my whole lot of time. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Catwalk, by, like, through here, right? The last room the here lights is rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this Something place hold? Lift. Stanley thought to himself. <clears throat> did he have the strength to find out? Jumping off the cut. So I did that. Oh, but I didn't do it with out the bucket. Let me check now here. the monitors jumped to life. Is that actually their it? true nature revealed? At the Each start. bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals so reduced not the to way. images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This is not the way. Definitely not the way. This...
Just a step through this door, Stanley thought to himself, that's all I need. If I can make it through this door, I can make it through them all. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, hmm. just to admire it. It was okay. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else okay. can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero <laughs> consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why? No buckets. I don't know how to convince you of this, <laughs> but I really do want to help you. Uh -huh. To show you something beautiful. Aha! Uh -huh. Let me prove it. And there it is. The last Stiggly Wiggly. Savor this moment, Stanley. This is a real accomplishment. This is doing something just for the sake of doing it. Where so many people expect to be rewarded for the most trivial achievements, you've insisted that a job well done is its own reward. I would tell you that I'm proud of you for collecting them all, but that would be like a reward, and we can't have that. So, instead I'll just say, it's done. We're all done here. And now we can go to whatever the hell you were doing before you hunted for figurines. That's it. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating. <laughs> I love this. Stanley walked <laughs> through the red door. <laughs> All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Skill tree. Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Oh, now, yes, the reading. Tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Oh, of course. A three. Really. Maybe next time we can get you to form an actual opinion, <laughs> you know? Any level of critical thinking or engagement with your surroundings? Does that sound good? Think we can do that? Yes? Mm, wonderful. <laughs> Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. That's all right. Forgot about this. Ninety eight point nine percent of players are more attractive than Stanley. <clears throat> All right, I'll take the left door. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game <laughs> I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up.
Here we go. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very Any meaningful breath? game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. That's a real so why thing. why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. So people have made macros to do this shit. You heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't no, know. No, it was four do. hours, I'm completely yeah. out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game just to ease the pain? Let's see. What do we have here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, this seems like it. Yeah, work. there's actually an Let's ending it to it. Shot. You can look it up on YouTube. But there's another game if you keep playing that one. Whoa, Firewatch! Ah, fascinating. What the fuck? What do you think this game is about, Stanley? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? I don't know if I remember seeing hmm. this in the game. Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your creep tower, perhaps for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm. I don't know if I've yes, seen this. that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental... Yeah, depravity. it was Minecraft. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it seems there's even more. This is different, Come, right? Let's venture out. This game came out after. Out oh my god. Firewatch is a really good game, too. I'm stuck here, aren't I? Oh, fuck me. Yeah, because this came out after the original Stanley Parable. Firewatch was awesome. That was a good one. Oh, no. No, 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 no. It can't be. It is. It's an open world game. Good God, quickly Jonesy block it off. Lake. <laughs> oh, thank goodness, Stanley. What a close call. You really wandered off into that, that thing, that big open, just wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go in any... Oh, oh thank heavens we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. <laughs> okay, I think this will be just the thing. What is... Is this Rocket League? <laughs> See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. <laughs> Stanley, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. Can I fall down that? Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together. Yes, I think surely we must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. For real? Oh. <laughs> Oh, I can move fast. Well, that's good. Are you doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? Is it better than my miserable little story that I work so hard on? Stanley, I have a thought. Hold on. What are you doing? Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley, come back.
Uh, I can't. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness. It's like an old office building. I think I'm just looking for the darkness. Nope. Aha. There it is. No? I don't know what to do. I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice, and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. There's one thing I haven't done yet. <clears throat> And that is, I want to look at the achievement list. Oh god. The balloons are gone. Oh my- Stanley, I'm sorry, but I have to put a pause on things. It's just, it's those figurines. It's a fake one! <laughs> I haven't stopped thinking about them since you nabbed every last one. Wasn't it just the most intrinsically fulfilling moment of your entire life? Didn't it fill you to the brim with inner richness? Yes, I know we're supposed to be telling a story, but won't you please indulge me with one more trip back to the memory zone? I would love nothing oh more than to God. revisit the figurines. Just one more time. Now remembering when Stanley found the collectibles. So we go down now, right? <sighs> Here's where it all began. The first collectible. Back then, we had no idea of how many of them we'd find. Sure, it said six right there on the screen, but how could we know for certain? We were so innocent. We'll never be like that <laughs> again, Stanley. Seven. is different. Executive bathroom. Oh, it's and showing you the old was a second Stan Lorene. You found this one all on your own, just by poking around in the boss's bathroom. You did that, Stanley. I'll be honest. Back then, I had no faith in you to find any of them, let alone six. But you continue to surprise me in all sorts of mundane, unremarkable ways. This is amazing. Okay, let's do a little quiz. Which of these rooms was the room you found your third mini stand? Can you remember? Boss's office. Hey, that's exactly right. It was here behind the boss's office. It was the third one. You picked it up, and then after that, you had three of them. 
I'm glad these moments are so crystal clear in your memory, but I shouldn't be surprised. After all, science tells us that it's impossible to forget your third time doing anything. This is insane. Let's see, what came next? Oh yes, we found a figly in this pink room. Oh well, I can't actually say I remember being in this room, but it's here in the memory zone, so it must have happened. That we did not do. He's fucking with me. Wait, do I actually? No. Stairs? This was the fifth mini stand, and this one was really something special. It was under the stairs. I remember it so clearly. Pink room. In fact, because this one is particularly special to me, I made a little video to commemorate the occasion. Enjoy. <laughs> oh, it's like a shitty YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. you back doesn't it i spent a lot of time making that video but it was eight minutes i wouldn't have spent on anything <laughs> so i didn't collect one right hey sparky and then stanley then we came to the last collectible the final figurine right here by the red and blue doors this memory is the most distinct and clear in my mind, perhaps because it was the one that happened more recently than all the others. Who can truly say how the mind works? All I know is that this is the moment where you picked up a figly and I thought to myself, yes, that's all of them. They're all collected. It was a moment unlike any other. It changed other, names every time. Except for the other moments figly. picking up figurines, which it was exactly like. So it must change depending on which um, ones you collect in which order. And then there was no more. Because we've caught up to the present moment. Nothing left to do but move onward into the future. Goodbye, memory zone. <laughs> uh, no, 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 I'm not done. I'm not ready to move on. Stop the loading screen. Isn't there some way we can stay here, keep enjoying these figurines? Let's just go backwards. We'll do the memory zone again from the opposite direction. See how that feels. Yes, let's do it. Okay, yes, the room with the red and blue doors. I remember this. <laughs> I must say, of all the figurines we looked at in our initial tour of the memory zone, this one is the most distinct and clear in my mind. Let's keep going, I want more. And here's where I made that video. Don't you remember the video we watched? <laughs> Yes, I love that video. Uh, that's the best. Still don't remember the pink room, Stanley. Still no memory of this one. Good room, though. A solid room. <laughs> yeah, good room. Uh. These really were a treat to hunt down. You know, if there had been any kind of reward for finding all of these, it really would have neutered the intrinsic joy of collecting them. I'm very glad we resisted the temptation. Next one. <laughs> the warehouse is the one that was missing, that's right. This was our second figly. Don't you remember? Yes, I remember it too. The past is truly a wonderful thing. Why does anyone ever choose to leave it? Keep going. 
This is it, the very first one we found in the exhibit where I introduced you to the figlerines. Oh, I want more memories, Stanley. I want to keep going. What else is there? What came before this? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look, it's the terrible new content that we were originally sold on. I remember hating it back then, but time does put a rosy figure <laughs> on everything. In fact, I dare say I'm actually quite fond of it now. Look how much fun the past is. I want more, more memories. Wow. Oh yes, the two doors. Who could have forgotten that? A classic memory, this one. And before everything else, there was your office. Is there anything else? Was there something that came before your office? There's something I feel I can remember. I can remember. I can remember. Yes, I'm remembering something now. I remember before this whole story got oh, started. Wow. Back then, I was... I was different. I used to make big decisions. I was passionate. I was skeptical. I weighed each decision with profound thoughtfulness. And then somewhere along the way, I stopped making decisions. I became lazy and I came up with, well, came up with a character named Stanley to do my thinking for me. He would make the decisions. He would decide which way to go. I would cheer him on as he collected figurines for no reason. <laughs> Why did I invent Stanley? Was I lonely? Yes, perhaps that's it. Perhaps I needed to imagine I had companionship. And Stanley really did make for a wonderful companion, even if he was a fiction. But uh, I suppose it's grown old. I, I want to think for myself again. I want to go back to how it used to be. Yes, I can be on my own again. I can do it. I'll be stronger this time. I'll take care of myself. I don't need Stanley anymore. Oh, but he truly was so much fun to play with. You know what? Since we're in the memory zone, how about one more good memory? Let's go back just once and give Stanley one more run of the office and then I'll retire him for good. I did enjoy telling his story <laughs> so very much. Okay, here we go. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Juz Bucket, what have you made? Amazing, that's so good. <laughs> good morning, thank you for contacting the Future Happiness Foundation. We are confirming your shipment of 1,327 cardboard boxes to your place of work. Can you verify that this is correct? Excellent. Your order will arrive shortly. Thank you again for contacting the Future Happiness Foundation. <laughs> Stanley cradled the bucket in a gentle embrace, protective yet delicate. So what are I actually meant to do now? Compassion. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. I haven't and been back to the, the room. door on his left. To see the achievement wall. Still, no one was here. Reboot the game Stanley entirely. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. For real? Maybe do I do that right now? I think I do it right now. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Because I don't office. think I have to do this. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this rever... This is crazy. <clears throat> Developed by Crows, Crows, Crows. Uh, 
Okay. Oh. That's crazy. Okay, so begin the game. It wanted me to begin the game again. This is the story of a man named Stanley. I guess I skipped. Stanley worked. Welcome All back. All his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Ah. Stanley's bucket, the only co-worker he would ever truly need. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more well, than ever. Maybe Perhaps that's what it wanted me to office see. Was where he'd find answers. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. I think I'm done. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. But Stanley guessed the oh, correct shit. code by sheer... Oh, no, I got it. I got was it wrong. the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Five o'clock. <laughs> I think I think I might be done, guys. I think it just wanted me to do the, the time elevator thing. raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Favorite time? Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I need to go to bed, guys.
Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Please enjoy. Uh. <laughs> oh. What is time? Yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Is that it? I think we're done. Like for realsies. This is the story of a man named I think we are indeed done I want to see what happens if I um, boot up the game one more time and then yeah bedtime I'm desperately need to go to bed yeah the end is never the end what time is it? 10.58. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I just realized my camera's like in the way. There's no more information for me to gather. But if I'm being totally honest, the clock doesn't do anything in the game anyway. You won't have me here when the game starts next time, but that's okay. Video games were meant to be played alone. <laughs> that's maybe the only information I really learned about you. There is still one more setting that we need to adjust, but it may take a little time before I'm ready for that. Oh, God. Yeah, you did, Drew. Epilogue. There's so much more. What the fuck? It keeps going. Yeah, I did do the infinite hole. <laughs> it's just his chair. Walk towards the moon. like they're not cactus they're like chair the sun oh no we want to go this way don't we away from the sunset <clears throat> 
The atmosphere is great. Wow. Is this a review? Cookies block! <laughs> it's the guy that... Isn't that the guy that hated on it? How truly disappointed I am with its sequel? <laughs> I found the bucket to be quite comforting. This cat dog friendship will last forever. We got pretty close. <gasps> oh, well. <laughs> mm. No more spin offs. When the Stanley Parable, hang on, when the Stanley Parable launched to a massive success in 2013, its creators made plans to build the property into an entire franchise. <laughs> oh. Wow. The word sorry appears more than 25 times. <laughs> Jim, 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 Jim. <gasps> Holy fuck, there's so much. This is the collectibles, the figurines. We can't let these stay here. But then, also, wait, what's down here? Oh, I can't come back up there. Wait, we have to... <gasps> Uh-oh. There was another way back there. But it's terrible to learn that there will never be another Stanley Parable game. Did you read what the developers said? Preserve the integrity of the franchise? It's not sacred. Screw the legacy, let's keep making Stanley Parable games. Let's run this franchise into the ground. <laughs> he says, you see, that was a narrator's problem. Don't make his mistake. It's simple. All we do is change the number in the game's title screen. We also really need a really dumb subtitle. Try combining some random words together to make a new title for our game. Oh, this is... Dude. This is what um, Lush needs for his hack. The Stanley Parable 3. Atomic. Octopus. Tuesday. Oh. Atomic Octopus. No, Atomic... Atomic Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's do Parable 3. Every time you restart the game, we'll advance the number of the sequel by one, and then we'll pick a new subtitle. And nothing in the game itself will change when you do this. Adding more content sounds like work. It'll just be the same content recycled again. Let's do it. Good, then it's agreed. 
You know what? Since you put faith in my dear, I feel like I... What? I'm noticing that the narrator never found a way to give you the broken achievement. The achievement sh machine's all fixed. Oh my god. Please enter the current time. Oh my god. Some of us need to go to bed. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it just doesn't fucking end. <laughs> this is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor it's at all the same. desk, telling him what buttons it to push. It does say to skip. All of his co-workers were gone. How do I get back to the achievement mean? hall? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Does anyone remember how I got there? Or like the, the new content. How do you get there? Through this way. Oh, new content. Come on. Take me to the expo hall. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever. The Stanley Parable 2. Alright, so. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience built from the ground up. Why there are so many possibilities. It could go in so this many game different directions. Amazing. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been this developing for work. it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. All right. I can't believe it's that simple. Now, here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you'll come to this <gasps> lever, and when you pull it, the achievement will yes! be given. As you can see, test achievement, the please ignore. Yet, what a troll. Wait, what in the holy hell is going on? You've got the achievement? Why did the machine work? Stanley, I didn't fix it. I didn't do anything to it. I swear, it was broken just a second ago. Who fixed it? Is someone here? <clears throat> Are we being watched? Oh, God. Composure? Composure. <laughs> yes, as you can see, the machine is working as normal as I intended. It, um... It truly speaks to the awe-inspiring magic of the Stanley Parable 2. Breathe. Just breathe. Well, I guess that is now officially it. <laughs> wow. 
What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Right, we've definitely seen them all. Um, what was the other thing I wanted to quickly... Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the no, Stanley Parable done. 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. How does it tell me... Uh, how do you check on Steam the percentage? You have to actually quit the game, don't you? See how many people have unlocked it. I think that's if you put in heaps of eights on the uh, keypad. Finish the game in four minutes. Don't play for 10 years and play for entirety of a Tuesday. Well, anyways, with that being said, it is definitely bedtime. What a fucking awesome game this was. This uh, was a lot better than I was expecting. I thought I was have to go and hunt through the entire game, like all the same exits and stuff to like try and find it, to find all the stuff. Um, but, but you can't do it in here, can you? You have to actually finish, like quit the game and have a look at it. Uh, but yeah, it ended up being way better than I was expecting. That was fantastic. Ugh, literally like right there, where? Personal achievement. Oh, global. <laughs> Test achievement. 8% got that. Don't play it for 10 years. How can 1.5% of people have that? Is that from changing the clock? Play it for all of a Tuesday. How? Changing the clock? Worlds. The settings world champion, only eleven and a half percent. What a what a great game. That's fantastic. Well you made it this far. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this.